In this tutorial, we are going to see how to use Godot's new Tileset Editor, a tool to conveniently edit tilesets, set them up, and then use them with the tile map node. There have been some pretty good improvements in this version. We are going to see how to set up auto tiles, but also how to use tiles that span over multiple cells and the Atlas feature as well, which allows you to group multiple textures in a single tile entry in the tile map editor. Let's get started. So we're going to create a new 2D scene for that and add a tile map inside of it. Once you have your tile map node selected, you want to click on the tile set property and create a new tile set. As you click over the tile set resource, you're going to see the tile set editor bottom panel expand. Anytime you can press Shift F12 to toggle the bottom panel full screen or to make it take as much space as it can. We're going to start at the bottom left of the interface here with the Add Texture button. This is the button you use to load textures, to load tile set images into the tileset editor. I have one here that you can find in the video description from Butch. This is a project that we are leaving on GitHub for you to try. And I'm going to open that one. We're going to use it to set up some auto tiles here as it has some nice textures. So by default, you want to first create a tile and you have to click that button to first see the snap to grid option appear, but then you want to create a tile really quickly so that you can toggle snapping on and see the snap options appear in the inspector. For this tile set, you want to set the snapping step to 16 by 16. By default, it should be 32 by 32, which is a bit big for this one. We're going to work with 16 by 16. And then with the tile selected, I'm going to click the dustbin icon to delete it. Let's talk about single tiles to start with. So you can use the new single tile button to create one in the top right of the interface, and then click and drag to create a single tile. This is a tile that's going to take one cell in your tile map, but the texture itself can be as big as you'd like. So we're going to click and drag over the tree to create a big tile. And once you've done that, once you've selected that tile, you're going to see four sub tabs. The first one allows you to set the texture region that the tile you're, that you're going to draw when you use the tile. Then you can draw collision shapes, light occlusion shapes and navigation shapes. And the three tabs here work more or less the same way have two new icons in the toolbar that will allow you to respectively create a square or a rectangle that fills the shape or to manually create a polygon. We're going to select the first one just to show you that once you click inside the region it's going to automatically create a full-sized square. This is something you will use pretty often for navigation but also collision so it's a useful addition here. Notice that you can now create concave shapes. This was not supported in the previous version. If you draw a polygon that has a gap inside of it or a notch, you can click make concave to make the collision shape work. You have to toggle the option manually. Let's select the make polygon button and deactivate snapping to the grid to create a small collision shape that's going to only span over the base of the tree. So to create the collision shape you want to click to add points. You can right click to cancel the process and then you want to click back on the starting point to confirm the shape. From there with the select tool selected you can click and drag over any vertex to move it in the view and fine tune your shape. Note that you can also use grid snapping and you can lower the step value to create more detailed shapes. You could go down to eight by eight, for example, here, 
or even four by four and zoom in with the buttons in the top right of the interface to then move your dots and snap them automatically to the grid. This is really convenient when your art is fairly squarey or when you want to have horizontal and vertical lines only in your collisions or to have precise pixel perfect collisions in your game. The occlusion and navigation shapes work the exact same way. So we're going to now uh, talk about one thing. It's that if you go back to your tile map, so it's going to exit the tile set editor. I have to set my cell size on the tile map node to 16 by 16 to match the tile set resource. So look at how these single tiles work. You're only going to draw on one cell at a time. And that's one thing I don't like about the system, about the way it works. It's that even though my tree is taking four by four cells in my view, it's only going to be drawn, it's only going to be mapped on one cell in the tile map. And it's going to be the top left cell, which is not always convenient. Which means that I can't sample one bit of the tree and replace, for example, use a variation tile on one of the parts. At the same time, because the drawing order works pretty well here, it's going to draw the bottom textures in front. This makes it fairly easy to overlay tiles on top of one another. Let's now look at auto tiles. Auto tiles are tiles that are going to automatically change texture based on how you draw them. They can be pretty smart. The amount of variations or the flexibility that you get from them depends entirely on how many textures you prepare, but you can see the result on screen. That's what we're going to create right now. I'll go back to the scene I was working on, go back to my tile set, select the texture we were working on and create a new auto tile. It's the second button in the top right of the screen. You want to make sure first to have a rectangular area where you have all the textures you need for the auto tile to work and to not have any other tiles overlap with it. Uh, let me explain why. So when you create an auto tile, you're going to sample all the textures. You're going to create a region that spans over all of the texture variations that you need. And the problem is if you make that region too big, then you will have a hard time when you create new tiles, you will have a hard time selecting them. You can see how I just inadvertently reset the region on my auto tile because there were two tiles overlapping one another. So I'm going to create an auto tile that's going to span over the first six columns in my tile set. From there, you can see a few extra buttons compared to single tiles, bitmask, priority, icon, and Z index. We are most interested in bitmask and icon to start with. The icon is going to be the main tile that you draw when you select the tool and the icon you will see in the tile map editor. Here you can see for now, it's that grass corner, which is not what we want. We want to select the grass in the middle here. And once I've done so, I go back to my tile map, I'm going to draw the base grass color. Then we want to use the bitmask to set up auto tiles. And the bitmask, how to explain? It's a representation of how the tiles are connected to one another. Let me give you an example. Having two bitmasks on the right, as I have here, means that uh, the system is going to pick this left edge if we have the full tile to the right of it and the corner tiles above and below it. Godot is going to sample the textures, trying to create a nice full shape, a nice path based on the red dots that you drew. You have a few options for the bitmask. You have two by two. This kind of corresponds to the terrain feature in the tile map editor. Then you have two three by three bitmasks, which are a bit more complex. 
this is going to give us a 3x3 three three grid to draw the, the graph, the connections between our tiles. I'm going to show you how to use them in a second, but you have the minimal and the full option. Minimal is roughly what you can see here with maybe a few extra tiles. This is going to allow you to draw single paths, single cell paths, and to draw grids here to draw rectangles with your tiles. And the full 3x3 three three adds quite a bit of variations to have all the connections you can imagine with crosses and all those kinds of things. We're going to start with 3x3 three three minimal because this is the only one we need here. Even though we can explain how to draw bit masks with words, it's a lot more intuitive to test than to explain or to think about with words. And the rule of thumb I can give you is that you want to draw the bit mask where you have the full texture here, the full grass, or where the player can walk. Here I want to have a one cell empty border around the main area. We can already test this, by the way. I'm going to draw rectangular areas or square areas. You will see that Godot places the corners properly. Going back to the tile set, you want to draw a single tile here. You can see it corresponds quite well to the area where we have the full grass. We want to draw something similar to our borders here, but reversed for what I typically call the inner corners or the inner edges of our tile map. Then we have a one cell wide path. We want to reflect that by having only one, a one cell wide bit mask. And we're going to complete it with the extra tiles that Butch provided here, which are also one cell wide paths, but with some cross and endings here. And the last ones we have here are for when you draw a square or a rectangular grass area and you want to have a one cell wide path branching off of it. With this setup here, if you go back to the tile map, you will be able to draw one cell paths and to have crosses or even to have loops in your path, but you will also be able to have the path connect to the main square or rectangular area. Now there are a few tiles that are missing from these tile set to have full flexibility. So you can see a very rare setup, I should say. But uh, with what Butch provided, you already have quite a lot of flexibility, to be honest. The only limitation here is that the one cell paths cannot branch from the corners. They have to come from the center of the shape or you can have these two cells wide paths that branch off a larger rectangular area. I'll briefly talk about the priority here. The priority is here to add random variations when you draw the auto tiles and z-index to control the z-order, the rendering of your tile. Going back to the tile map, note one limitation of the auto tiles in Godot. It's that there again, you can't sample a single cell like this corner and draw it somewhere else. Godot is always going to take over and draw the auto tile for you. There again, in my opinion, it provides simplicity over full flexibility at the moment in Godot 3.1. And it might change in the future, but for now, that's how it is. The last elements I want to talk about are naming your tiles and tile atlases. So anytime you can select a given tile and in the inspector, you can change its name. For example, grass for the first one, for the second one, it's the tree. I'm going to call it tree. Let's hide the names. And from there, I'm going to create a new atlas. And atlases span over several tiles, several textures. 
you're only going to draw one of them at a time. It's just a way to group tiles together. I'm going to name this one props, for instance. And with that, once I go back to my tile map, I can select the props and select any of them in the split area. Again, it's a convenient tool to group textures together. At times, I found uh, some small limitations with the tool and some small bugs. When you control and click on a tile, you can sample the tile that you are using. The thing is with the Atlas, it always only samples the first texture and not the one that you drew on the map. Then note that when you want to draw props or to draw transparent elements in your tile set, you can't draw them directly on your tile map. Just like with any tile set system, you have to create new layers. And in Godot, your layers are going to be individual tile map nodes. So you want to go back to the scene here, to the root node, I'm going to create a new tile map node. And I want to copy the properties of the first layer. So I'm going to select the first layer, go to the wrench icon in the inspector, click it, copy the parameters, go to my second layer and paste the parameters. It's going to share the tile set resource with it. It's going to set the cell size the same as my tile map here. From there, I can select my props and draw individual props to my heart's content. They are going to draw over the first tile map. Same thing, can now play with the trees. Note one thing, another limitation of the multi-cell tiles, it's that the draw order for the tiles is based on the cell that you drew, the cell position. If I draw my tree here, it's going to be behind the rock because the cell of the rock is lower than that of the tree. So if you want to add trees and make use of the nice system that allows them to overlap smartly in Godot, if you want to draw large elements like these, you will have to create yet again another tile map layer that you will put above your props that should stay on the ground. With that, we can finish by saying that if you have multiple tile map layers and they are using a tile set, a resource, it's going by default to be shared in your scene. Godot shares the resources. And anytime you can select your tile set, go into it and click the floppy disk icon in the inspector to save your resource on the disk. You can save your Butch tile set. I think that's how you write his nickname, Butch tileset.tres. From there, you can reuse that tile set resource from the file system down there. You'll be able to reuse it across your project and across your levels. That's a quick overview of the new tile set editor. You will certainly find some rough edges. Sometimes I'm not able to scroll before I change the zoom level. It's a minor bug that we have in the first 3.1 release. Note that to scroll, it's a middle mouse click, by the way. If you want to scroll over the texture, just like with any texture region editor or these areas in the bottom panel. And note that you can change the subtile size for the individual tiles in an atlas as well in the inspector. So you can make the textures that you are going to draw bigger or smaller than other tiles in your tile set. You can finally attach a script to your tile set and to run some code to interact with your tile map. That's a topic for another video. For now, I want to thank you kindly for watching and let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.